we are going to go over the planetary aspects surrounding us and affecting us for this upcoming week of June 25th through July 1st. And this week, we have a lot of major energies that are shifting for 2018. These are some of the things I've been talking about quite a bit uh, throughout this the course of 2018. And one of the biggest ones, of course, is the Mars retrograde that happens on Tuesday the 26th. This happens tomorrow. And what that is doing is setting us all back a little bit. And uh, But it's a good thing. What it's doing is kind of making us to go inside and uh, stay away from the energies of others and really focus internally on what it is that is uh, changing dynamic wise within ourselves 2018 is such a big year for healing past traumas past memories past issues that are going way 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 back I mean we're talking childhood issues that follow throughout our lives and keep making making us do things on autopilot that we don't necessarily want to do whether it's continuously getting into bad relationships having a bad relationship with yourself um, constantly looking down on yourself, maybe it's some things that you learn, defense mechanisms you learned as a child that just don't fit you anymore, that you've outgrown and outdate, but you still hit that repeat button because that's what's familiar. This is the year, 2018 is the year that we free ourselves from that. But in order to do that, we have to pull that issue up from the root and heal it from the root. And there's various points throughout 2018 where those roots are being exposed and when those roots get exposed mind you they've been in there so long that they're extremely sensitive and they're extremely numb and when those roots are exposed it's best for us to go within and try to heal it ourselves and listen to the guidance of ourselves and the guidance of what the universe and our spirit guides are telling us certain points throughout 2018 are stronger than others and we had some pretty major ones at the eclipse cycles that were happening in January January 30th around that time frame so remember that as we talk through here because that was giving us some clues as to those roots and how they need to be changed the situations that were happening in our life around that January 30th time frame Think back to that. Okay, keep that tucked in the back of your mind as we talk here today. We had that. We also had the major shift of Uranus moving into Taurus in May. That was on May 12th. Huge for our Taurus friends, okay, because Uranus is the one that wants to liberate us. It wants to free us from these things. And Uranus is one of our slower moving planets because it's so, so far away from uh, the sun when it moves into a new sign and whenever Uranus makes a contact to any kind of planet it's big and we feel those changes but when it shifts into a new sign that is huge it hasn't been in Taurus for 80 years and as such what it's doing planet of freedom is going into the sign of finance of uh, stability of security of uh, the uh, the roots that are under us, right? We've got the two that are colliding, and what it's doing over the course of the next seven years while Uranus goes through that sign is it's making sure that we have good, solid ground under our feet for these new beginnings, these liberations and freedoms that have to happen that question us and question our thinking on what we once saw is the stability and security under our feet and how that's shifting and changing. So maybe it's new family dynamic, maybe you've lost your parents, maybe you've lost your career. We're not saying losing these things. What we're saying is that that is the natural progression of your life cycle and your life path. And now it's a matter of accepting it. These things are part of that pulling the root out. Okay, because it's having you look at these things that no longer fit and work. Now, this week, one of the major things that's happening, and I've seen this for a lot of our friends, a lot of people, a lot of my clients that I have done charts for, is the Mars retrograde. Now, Mars is the one that helps us to push past, to find that courage, and to say, I am the warrior, and I am going to do these things. 
Now, Mars does not retrograde every year. Usually it's every other year is when Mars retrogrades, but it retrograded last year, and again it is this year. So that gives a little more credence to this time frame over the next couple of months while our planet of the warrior goes into hibernation mode. Mars, now this is going to affect our Aries friends the most. So if you are an Aries or if you have your moon or your ascendant in Aries in your birth chart, this is going to be a time that's a little bit uh, more introspective for you. If you are an Aries type person, so that means either your sun, moon, or your ascendant of your birth chart in that, in Aries, you are one of those people that starts things. You initiate things. You are the leader. You are the one that has the fire and brings the fire and the fun <laughs> to things. Um, so when Mars retrogrades, it's time to step back from that. It's time to reassess that. Mars represents our action. Mars represents how we do lead things in our life, how we do find that confidence in ourselves to say, okay, I'm going to make this happen and I'm moving forward regardless, sometimes without thinking, right? That's the shadow side of it. Sometimes we do it on an impulsive push because that's what Mars does. When we're pushed on those impulses, we don't necessarily think of those consequences. And when Mars retrogrades, it's a two-month period when that happens. We kind of look to those times when we leapt, <laughs> we would leap without thinking, or our impulse gets the better of us. Mars has its shadow side. Mars is the warrior, and it's strong, and it's brave, but it can also bring out the fire in us of anger, where the good side of it is the fire of passion and, and drive. The shadow side is anger. And selfishness. So when Mars retrogrades, it has us kind of looking back to those times and saying, okay, I need to pause. I need to review my actions. Okay, action is Mars. I need to review my actions of the past and see how that has affected me, where I'm at now, and how I really want to change that moving forward. But it's also pulling up that root, remember, too. Now, What's interesting, remember we talked a little bit about Uranus just a little bit ago. That's the planet that frees us from the chains of the past. It wants to liberate us from situations that don't work anymore. Sometimes it does it, a lot of times it does it in, a, in an unexpected way. That's what Uranus does. It's the most unexpected of all the planets out there. Uh, going in its own direction whenever it wants and does things that we don't expect it to do. And as such, it does that in our own lives as well. It makes things kind of go crazy and haywire on us. It throws us out of our comfort zone. It makes situations happen that push us out of that comfort zone and say, okay, now I have to adapt. Uranus rules the sign of Aquarius. So you're also going to be finding that this is a big year for our Aquarius friends as well because it's really pushing you to evolve to where your soul needs to be by letting go of things of the past. Aries friends, this is a huge time because as Mars retrogrades in the sign of Aquarius, okay, that Uranus ruled Aquarius, it has a stopping pausing and reflecting on our actions of the past that have helped that it well that have held us back I should say from really being our true authentic self okay because remember Uranus is the true authentic self it is the one that pushes us out of our comfort zone so that way we are living in what our soul is supposed to be and who we truly are it peels that mask of the past off it peels that trauma of the past off it takes those roots, it exposes them, and it says this doesn't work. So you'll find, you know, you culminate all of these things together. And we find that this is a very vital period. This is a summer where it's not going to be so much wanting to go out and party and go and do these things and be social and blah, blah, blah. It's more about introverted looking to the self, looking to those roots and seeing how we want to fix them and change them. Um... Another thing that's interesting, too, um, because it's trying to help us from repeating those same cycles, right? That's what the root ex exposing is about. We're not fixing it necessarily in this two-month time frame. It starts June 26th and it ends August 27th in the Mars retrograde. It's not about fixing it in that time frame. It's just about recognizing it, listening to it 
taking that time, if your soul is telling you you don't want to be outside and around others' energies, there's a reason. Because those energies, those people, those those they might be part of that problem of the roots. And you need to remove yourself from that observe it and listen to what your soul is telling you you need to do to make it change okay you have the greatest wisdom within you to know how to change those things and not repeat the same cycles again and again um now let's think of this the last time that mars was in the sign of aquarius on the exact day that mars transited into the sign of aquarius was election day 2016 that tells you right there kind of what the energy is. Uranus is unexpected. We all know something very unexpected <laughs> that happened on Election Day of 2016 when Donald Trump moved into office. Now, I am not one to push any political beliefs. I'm not going to say anything like that um, because that's just not who I am. I'm not like that. I'm just saying let's observe what the universe had put into place that day. For as many people that feel that Donald Trump wasn't supposed to be an officer, what have you, uh, the universe was sending out a signal in that time. Having Mars, the leader of the Zodiac, going into such an independent, uh, unique, strange, and comfort zone pushing sign of Aquarius in that time frame, that goes to show you that the warrior energy is saying that things have to change, that the ways of the past have to change. And that's exactly what happened in that time frame. Whether you accept it, like it, or not, that is what the universe was saying because that is ultimately what is needed. Okay, It's pushing all of us to go within and say, what do I want to do to make change? Because we each play a little part in that. We each do. Living in our soul purpose is what we are supposed to do to make a difference in this world, in our country, in our local government, and within our own selves. It's about what we do on a personal scale. Not about what everybody else is doing out there, right? That's what the transit happened last time. was pushing us out of what we saw as comfortable and normal. And here it is back again. So you can almost see where things are going to be uh, pulling that back together. Donald Trump certainly uh, will act without thinking at times, won't he? And we see now where this two months is going to be a time frame for him to pause and reflect as well and say, where did the warrior get a little bit too much of me? Where did that hot-headed Mars shadow side of impulse get the better of me? And how can I change that as well? A little bit of a reset for him as well in this time frame to make sure that we have solid footings moving forward. That's ultimately what this is bringing us and 2018 is bringing us to. Yes, there's that fire of independence that's stoking within us to change what the past was, but it's making sure that we have a solid foundation under us moving forward as well. And these things happen in little increments. It doesn't all happen at once, right? These little things starting January, again in, in May, Again, now with this energy that's happening as Mars retrogrades, and again as we have shifts throughout the latter part of 2018 as well, little bits and pieces that help to make sure that these things have good solid roots under them and that those roots are healed, that that root is healed. And that comes to the focus as well, not only because of the Mars retrograde that's happening this week, but because we have a really powerful full moon, the Capricorn full moon that's coming in this week on Thursday the 28th as well. And what the main point of that one is, is it focuses on the roots and structures that are who we are and are under us. Okay. When we have full moons, they represent a culmination. They represent a culmination of energies, the ending of cycles. Now, each one is going to be a direct impact of a previous full moon that happened before. When we have a full moon, we have our sun that is in a sign, and we have the moon that is in its absolute polar opposite sign. And what we are in right now is the sun in Cancer, and we have the moon in Capricorn. That's going to be this full moon cycle. And what it's calling into question is that balance between the two signs. Every full moon calls into question that balance between the polar opposites. When we talk about sun in Cancer, 
it is shining a light on all the things that have to do with our home and our family our roots and our childhood okay we talked a lot about that earlier so you know where that's playing a major part in the energy of 2018 now when we have our moon in Capricorn that's dealing with the polar opposite side we've got home and family over here Capricorn deals with our outward self our career and our life path purpose our reputation and the structures that are around us so we look at this full moon and we look back to when we were dealing with the cancer full moon back in December this was the last time so this is a culmination of those energies and it, we're going to have reminders that are popping up again that are saying okay this is what was happening that was reminding me where there were cracks in the foundations and the roots of my life whether that has to do with childhood whether it has to do with the home that you live in now family issues career issues those are the things because those are what give us the stability under our feet some things happened at the end of 2017 that showed you where the cracks were this full moon is where those energies come full cycle and where certain things end maybe it was a, a situation let's look at it from a career standpoint okay let's say at the end of 2017 you realized this job this career doesn't make me happy anymore whether it's something that you've worked for for a year few weeks or if it's something you've put your life's energy of 30 years into something told you let's say this has to change because it's not making me happy the root is coming out and it's saying this is not me I need to do what my soul has been pushing me for these years to do this is the full moon okay where that comes back around and you will see that the universe is changing things it may push you to doing things to ending that cycle to ending that career finally because over the past several months you've learned what needs to happen and change that's definitely something for sure this is a full moon that is teaching us to trust wherever we are now is where we're meant to be there's been a lot of things pushing us out of our comfort zone making us go but I'm so used to this and I'm so comfortable here let's say that's the job again okay right but I'm so I know what to expect I know what to do but the universe has been throwing things at you let's say in this career uh, there's been major changes let's say that there's been acquisitions in the company people that you've worked with all these years are being let go and you know that you're part of that energy too and it's coming you can feel those shifts coming trust that process that's what this full moon is telling us the moon of roots and structures the moon of family and home and all the things that bind us to who we are where our sensitivities and our emotions lie the greatest this moon is telling us to trust that ultimately the moon in cancer they rule our intuition so this is a full moon that is pushing us to really trust what our inner self is telling us needs to happen trust wherever we are and that's the hardest thing isn't it to trust in the complete darkness and follow just what our heart is telling us to do instead of what our logic is telling us we need to that's what this full moon is about you have your heart which is cancer the Sun in cancer that's shining a light on that energy now and then we've got logic over here that is the Saturn rule Capricorn heart versus logic <laughs> but it's telling us to trust what our heart is telling us the most because ultimately that is what's going to bring us greater stability weird I know but that is what this full moon is doing and pay attention to what signs are being shown to you in the course of this week okay um, let's look at the side of the Saturn ruled Capricorn a little bit more to Cater Catercorn <laughs> Capricorn and Saturn that's a little mashup right there uh, Saturn is the planet that teaches us lessons it's the planet of karma it's the planet of setting rules and boundaries uh, in our lives self-discipline discipline with others but it's ultimately the planet of lessons so you may find that in this week uh, not only is a light going to be shined on where Mars has gotten the better of us and where our actions have led us to where we are now and how we want to change that 
This is also part of that full moon energy. Remember, it's an ending cycle, so things are coming to completion, where maybe some of those choices for some people, if it was on the shadow side, where impulse and bad things got the worst of you, the full moon will shine a light on where uh, we have to learn lessons from our choices. Okay, No matter what it is, bad or good, uh, when Saturn comes to call and it makes us stand up and take accountability for our actions and our choices and our decisions. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's good because we're learning all the hard work, Capricorn and Saturn, that we've put into things. This is a time when we see the fruits of those labors and things actually do start to shift and change in the way we want. But no matter what it is, we see in this week that we have to confront these issues. We see that we have to accept things for what they are and we have to trust in the process because we know what's ultimately leading us to um, push through and to find that inner strength and say, you know what? I'm going to keep on keeping on because I know this is what's best. My intuition and my heart is telling me this is what's best. And we feel these things happening, okay? We don't necessarily have to act on them. We just have to observe them. And we're going to feel a little bit more of a push as we go into the second eclipse cycle of the year, which happens in July in the sign of Cancer as well, which is also very rare. And we'll go into that more into detail at a later date. Uh, but right now we're just going to focus on... Um, Trusting in the process. That's the number one thing, right? Action comes later, and we'll feel that push when it's time to act. But now is the time more for introspection and observation. So let's go with that. And let's pull some cards with this as well. Under this full moon energy, focusing on the heart and logic, and finding a balance between the two and knowing where to go. So we're pulling a stone, as we usually do in these readings, to see what archangel is surrounding us in the time of this Capricorn full moon, and helping hold our hands as we do so. Just feeling with my intuition now, which one really jumps out. It's like I feel like an electrical impulse when I land over the stone that is correct. Ooh, right there. <laughs> Oh, isn't this great? Oh, it's a beautiful yellow one, too, which is neat because we're focusing on intuition more so, and that's where the sun is right now is in the sign of intuition ruled cat, or, uh, cancer. This stone here is a beautiful chunk of citrine, raw citrine. Citrine affects the solar plexus chakra where all of our power lies, our personal power, and it's also where we access what our life purpose is here to do. The stone of abundance is what this stone is, and it's pushing us to greater heights and making sure that energy is clear around us, our solar plexus chakra is clear so that we can really, truly, confidently be where we need to be. But also citrine, it's Archangel uh, Uriel that surrounds us in this time as well. Uriel is known as the psychologist angel. He removes toxic thoughts from our mind. And he removes toxic energies from the karmic ties we have with others. Now, I said it briefly here, but Saturn ruled Capricorn, and that's where this full moon of endings is happening this week, deals with karmic ties that we have. I did a really wonderful video with my sister, the medium, Angela Chapko. And if you look on my Facebook page, I forwarded that link all about the karmic ties that we have and karmic debts that we have in our lives. Uh, this is a, a full moon that brings that to focus. And when we have these karmic cords with others or karmic lessons that we're bringing from previous lifetimes into this one, we carry old residual energies, traumas, situations that still pull us down. It stays in our energy. And we need to release that. He is the angel that does that on various levels so that we both, we all can move forward and not hang on to the past. He helps us work through issues, mentally processing them. He's also the angel that whispers those amazing ideas that come out of nowhere to us. Let's say you've been thinking on something for a long time and all of a sudden this thought comes through and you're just like, well, I can do that. That's him. He's the angel that whispers those things. So we know that he is around this week, not only clearing away the energies that no longer work um, and healing 
the areas and removing those toxic energies from our mind and, and our energetic fields. But he's also bringing us wonderful, positive new insights as well that help us move forward. So let's see what his message is, shall we? Archangel Uriel, if you could assist us this week. He is also the angel of Aquarius. Um, so we know that that's where Mars is going. We know that it's not just Uriel being there for this full moon energy. That just starts it off this week, right, as Mars retrogrades and we go into introspection mode over the next couple of months uh, because it is an Aquarius and he rules that sign um, focused on freedom and independence. So we know that he's around for all of that. Let's see what his message is for us. I feel like it's that card right on the top, so we're going to stop. Ooh, uh, learning what, oh, what a great card. You know what's interesting is this is the most difficult card in the entire deck of tarot. Five of air is what it's called in my particular set here, but it's the five of swords in, in the normal tarot. And swords in tarot represent mental thought. They represent difficulty. The sword is cutting through and being the warrior and having to uh, mentally prepare for things, but it also represents difficulties that we face in life. Five, of course, being the most difficult of all of the cards in the ten uh, card suit of swords. It represents a lot of fighting, a lot of energies uh, doing that. It's calling us to look back on our unwise choices that have led to the difficulties in our life, to learn what you can from the situation and move forward. Ultimately, the next card after this is the one that indicates moving past the difficulties. But this one is having us to review those situations. So definitely Archangel Uriel is around right now, uh, reminding us of that. I'm going to pull another card. These are the chakra cards, and they kind of give us like a one-word summary of that. He's telling us to look back at everybody's motives in these difficult situations that repeat themselves. So let's get a little bit more insight on that. I think I have to do it three times, so this is two. To release. Wow, isn't that powerful? Holy smokes. <laughs> isn't that powerful? That's what we do in the time of the full moon, is release these things. We hold on to these things so long, don't we? That's part of those toxic energies, those roots, because we hold on to them so strongly because we're afraid we're we're afraid if we let go of them that we'll have nothing to stand on. But the problem is when we hold on to these broken cords, broken energies. We're holding on to that broken energy of the past as well, and we can't move forward, so we have to release it. And I feel that that's part of what Archangel Uriel is coming through in this time of the full moon cycle, when it is about releasing what no longer works to us, because wonderful things are coming in as a result. Let's release what we can, okay, this week. And among all things, just recognize and quietly observe what's going around us and call on Uriel to help guide you through. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Um, and have a wonderful week. All right, thank you. Bye.